yesterday in six and exciting many of those who created competitive excellence throughout the nation have brought their skills and machinery to the bright lights of las vegas nevada for the suzuki rm cup challenge for young travis pastrana it's graduation day saying goodbye to what has been a brilliant amateur career looking ahead now to the professional big time it's been a banner year in motocross for Team Suzuki. Greg Albertine winning the Covenant AMA National 250 title. Stay tuned. A tribute to excellence is next. Welcome everyone to Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Art Ekman along with former seven-time AMA champion Rick Johnson and editor-publisher of Racer X Magazine, Davey Coombs. We are here to bring you the RM Cup Challenge, a gathering of those Suzuki RM riders who throughout the year have distinguished themselves in 11 different divisions of amateur motocross action. The 250 expert riders are at the gate, anxious to go. Rick, it looks like Kurt's got a little fresh mud on his uni. Yeah, out here in Vegas, what they do is they let the riders go for a parade lap, and evidently they watered the track. Kurt went down and got a little muddy. In the gray shirts, Kurt Hendrickson. He a, was a mini bike prodigy, talking with Danny Carlson before this moto. All levels of experience at the gate right now waiting is this Ryan Terlicki has quite a bit of experience. Let's go down to the gate, Davey Coombs. Tonight, I'm next here at the RM Cup, a very special treat. We're going to watch Travis Pastrana, the 50-year-old wonder kind out of Maryland, make his last amateur appearance here in Las Vegas. In three weeks, Travis will be back to race the MGM US Open. At that point, he will become a member of Suzuki's full factory pro team. They're turning him over to Roger DeCoster. He's been with Suzuki since age eight, and that is always kind of the goal of the Suzuki amateur program, to raise a rider from cradle to pro, and they've done that with Pastrana. So let's sit back and enjoy what will be the end of a very glorious amateur career. And the guy who helped rock that cradle is his dad right next to him there, next to Travis. There are various divisions that 421 riders from all over the states have qualified in, all battling for $102,125 in contingency money. The top 20 in each class are in the money in each one of these races. Kind of unusual to see all yellow at the gate, Rick. Yeah, it is, Art. You got, you got a different situation and a couple different strategies. You see guys doing big burnouts. You see some guys doing little chirps. Some guys doing nothing. Everybody's got their own technique for this asphalt start, and it is very challenging. I think it's the hardest because you have to be so patient. A lot of these riders haven't raced on the concrete starts before either. Yeah, you can see different body positions. Travis is straight up and gets a great game. 199, Travis Pastrana, good start, but it's Davey Carlson, number 135 of Sun City, California, getting the whole shot. A good, clean start, Rick. Yeah, everybody came off the gate smooth, no big, no big crashes. And look at this track. It's dry in a lot of areas, moist in some areas. This, this Las Vegas sand, when it breaks apart, it's really soft. But when it packs down, it's like concrete. Carlson, Pastrana, and Don Upton, the three riders out in front, as they start to try and pull away from the pack. Well, and here you see um, Travis Pastrana taking the double where Upton goes around the outside. There's sort of two different lines there. You can either take the outside line, which the jumps aren't as big and you can't clear them, or take the chance, which Travis did, and put him into second. An interesting uh, contrast of sandy spots, but also we see a lot of rock in there. Yeah, there is. This is basically one big gravel pit. If you look at those mountains in the background, this was all rock at one point. They just kept breaking up but Travis is riding really aggressive. What I like about him is he takes his jumping style and he rides the motocross track really aggressive. Watch how hard he hits the jumps and how hard he attacks the turn. Pastrana looking to make an early move for the lead. Carlson holding on to the lead right now, but look at that leap by Travis. What I like these, what these guys are doing is they're not worrying about what's behind them, they're just worrying about what's in front of them. Here comes Pastrana. Travis Pastrana takes over the lead in our 250 round. Now you gotta remember, this kid's only 15 years old. He's big in stature, but he's a very thin, but he's so aggressive and he rides with such maturity. And I think that comes from a lot of his play riding. You watch the way he attacks and the way he goes about things, but he's got a really good racing head on his shoulder. He does have a lanky frame, Rick. Uh, does this mean that he won't be on a 125 very long? Well, in my case, I only rode 125s one year, and that was in 1981. And Yamaha at that point said, you know, you're a little bit big. You want to try 250s? And I felt, well, that's where I'm going to be anyways. So why not go for it? And I think you'll probably see that with Travis. I mean, you're watching him here on a 250. 
He's aggressive. He's fast. The bike doesn't push him around. So I suspect we'll see him probably 2001 on the 250. Yeah, he'll get the experience on the 125 this next year, of course, with Team Suzuki. The battle for fourth is also on. Number 46 getting the challenge. Uh, Paul Curry got the challenge from 347. Ted Campbell. Campbell out of Apache Junction, Arizona. Rick makes the pass. Campbell does a copycat pass of what Pastrana did to Upton the first lap. And if you notice, that took away the rhythm of Curry. He starts now. He's made a couple mistakes. We'll see if he can gather back up. Ted Campbell moves into fourth. The brilliant future superstar Travis Pastrana is our leader. More Suzuki 250 action when we return. The Suzuki RM Cup Challenge is being brought to you by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Welcome back to the motocross arena at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The 250 experts are going at it right now. Travis Pastrana is our leader. Let's focus in on the rider in fifth, Paul Curry. Paul, born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, resides now in Naples. He's one of the top privateers in the Nationals this year on a 125. He was seventh at Millville, Rick. He was chosen AMA Rookie of the Year back in 1995. He's got lots of experience. He has a ton of experience, and it's showing right now. We, we saw earlier where he made some mistakes. He's bouncing right back. He's not holding him back. So he's a strong contender for this cup. He's looking like right now he wants that fourth place back again. He's not letting Campbell get away from him. Is this track one that you have to be well conditioned for, Rick? Well, definitely. It's a combination. It's kind of a hybrid track, kind of supercross, but on outdoor setting, longer lap times. But if you notice how beat up the track gets and the holes get really square, when you have a situation like that, your body is flexing so tight because the bike gets whipped from side to side. And typically windy in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's a big factor when you go throw in big jumps like they have here in Las Vegas. The wind will blow you off the track. It's not really at a point. You can see the, the banner slightly blowing in the breeze, but when it gets hot, when high winds kick up, you got to look out. We've got a battle for third going on. Donald Upton, number 76, trying to hold off Campbell, and they haven't lost Curry yet. No, they're, the whole group is right there. Curry, and they're all chasing down Carlson. Uh, Travis Pastrana's got a pretty big lead, so they're not really focusing on him, but they are focusing on Carlson, who is in second. 40 riders on the track. The top 20, of course, eligible for part of that $102,000 in contingency money. The richest single contingency payout event in the nation. As we take a look at Ted Campbell in Boyd. Well, Ted Campbell made that aggressive move on, on uh, Curry earlier, but now Curry has bounced back and he's coming right after him. Still, he takes that outside line where he got passed, but he seems to be making it work and he's pulling in on uh, Campbell a little bit. So it's Travis Pastrana, who's pretty well checked out on everybody, leading Carlson, Upton, Campbell, and Curry, the top five here for the 250 expert class. One man who has a right to be very proud of this entire RM Cup program is Mel Harris, the head of American Suzuki. Well, we have the RM Cup and the GSXR Cup, but our RM Cup was something we started a few years ago to help our Suzuki riders as an exclusive event to get them out there, have competition, pay over $100,000, so everybody wins money, and we've had over 400 riders a year attend, and it looks really good. I even can bet that a Suzuki will win. This is a great program. Uh, the race is kind of a thank you to all of those who raced on Suzuki's uh, throughout the year. In fact, if uh, you raced in 1998 or 99, a Suzuki RM, you were eligible to participate in this Challenge Cup. If they finish the top four in their class in one of the eight regions, they automatically qualified for this main event. And this is kind of a who's who on riders, okay? You can't come in after the race and say his bike was better than mine because you're on the same equipment. Rick, I would imagine you had $102,000 worth of contingency money to shoot for back in the days you were coming up through the ranks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big amateur day for me was, was a day that they called DG Day out in, out in uh, Southern California at Saddleback. And that was, uh, I think, a couple hundred dollars. But still, those were big bragging rights if you were the top amateur then. We've still got the battle with number 347, Campbell, and number 46, Curry, going after fourth place. And a good battle for third, fourth, and fifth, really, with Upton, Campbell, and Curry all fighting for the final podium spot. Carlson's pretty much checked out, but Campbell and Curry are chasing down Upton, 
little bit by little bit. So this track might be wearing him out a little bit. And one mistake by any of these riders, and we could change that position we saw on the upper left hand of the screen. Well, some riders might go for a point, you know, might be point racing a little bit. This is a combined effort between the two classes, and they might figure, well, if I can finish consistent, I have a better shot at the big money. There you can see the wind whipping up a bit as they go over the jump. Number 46 is Curry, trying to get on that rear tire. Well, you can see all riders are coming together, getting closer and closer, so I think we're about to see a big battle. One mistake by Campbell and Curry is right back in fourth place. Travis Pastrana, as we expected, has checked out here on the 250s. He is our leader, trying to get in more amateur victories in before his pro career starts next year. More 250 action from the Suzuki RM Cup right after these words. Welcome back to the Suzuki RM Cup from Las Vegas, Nevada. The 250 experts underway right now. Travis Pastrana in first place. Let's take a good look at him because he has just checked out, moved away from everybody, Rick. You know, he's a tall, we were talking earlier about he's a tall, thin rider. you got to remember he's 15 years old, but he does remind me of a certain kid that I knew in El Cajon named Ronnie Lachine. That Yamaha did the same thing that Suzuki did. Raised him from 80s, take him on to 125s. And, uh, Ronnie did phenomenal, and Travis uh, has a lot of the same style, real aggressive. We saw Paul Curry, number 46, passing Campbell, number 347, into fourth place. Let's check in with Davey Coombs, trackside. Well, so far, Team Suzuki, and I'm talking about the pro team, has got to be impressed with what Pastrana is showing him out here in Las Vegas. He's not actually a pro rider yet. He's only 15, and you can't turn pro to your 16. But today, he's out here beating some seasoned pro riders like Paul Curry, Ryan Terlecki, Donald Upton, Jerry Doss, or even Davey Yezik. Right now, 15-year-old Pastrana, the fastest pro rider on the track, and he's not even a pro. It's always interesting, Rick, when you see a rider uh, graduate to the next level. Will he handle it mentally as well as physically? Well, you got to look at the things that uh, Travis has gone through already. Some big injuries to his legs and to his back. Um, with the jump contest and also when he goes out and does those jump contests he's got three or four minutes to show the world what he's got so he's good with dealing with pressure he's bounced back he looks strong and he really looks good on this 250 today very well spoken lad as well i mean he can talk about this sport as well as he can ride oh curry now goes off the track a big break for campbell campbell moving into fourth place in that continual battle we've had race long for Boyd. Those guys have been going back and forth. Now, here you see Curry come in on the brakes really hard, washes the front wheel out, but he does a great job of saving it. Then, on top of it, he chases the hay bale down the hill. If that were me, I would have crashed twice. Once, <laughs> <laughs> when I washed out my front wheel, and the second time, hitting the hay bale. Donald Upton is uh, rather a lonely rider right now in third. At this point, but you can never relax. These guys are charging hard, so Upton can't relax, and he's also chasing down Carlson. So, we got races within races, and he just gets by. Donald Upton moving into second place. Carlson not wanting him to uh, break away now. I don't know if Carlson's getting a little bit fatigued or if he's just relaxing a little bit at this point, but oh, right there, Upton loses his seat and his side plate is hanging off. That is going to be a big factor in this Vegas track. Still quite a bit of time left in this 250 moto, and Upton is without a seat. This track has got long, flat turns. Like I said earlier, it's a hybrid supercross track, and there's not a lot of big bank, rolly turns. So you have these turns where you're sitting down for a long period of time, and that's going to kill Upton throughout this moto because he's going to have to stand up, use his back and his legs more, and he's not going to be able to roll through the middle of the turns as fast as the other guys who can hit the gas sitting down. Pretty tough to rest your legs at uh, any one point standing up all the time. Well, this this has been a real high-paced moto anyhow. Now you throw on top of there that he can't jump because if he comes up short, and all he's going to get is that subframe into his behind. And that, I've lost my seat twice, Art. <laughs> he is not in a good position. Right now, he's just wishing, man, I wish the white flag would come out. <laughs> Carlson in second place, up the now in third. Campbell in fourth, and Curry back in fifth, number 46. But it's up to him who's having to work double time, his legs, his back. Here we see he pretty much has to surrender the position to Carlson. Carlson does the big air on the inside on the double. Upton just has to surrender it and roll to the inside because he can't take a chance. If he comes up short with no seat, it's going to break his back. Rick, this is kind of the race after the race. You look back and say, hey, we really had a ball here. Oh, yeah. These guys are dicing back and forth. They've traded positions. I 
see something like five or six times, and they're still racing. I, my hat's off to Upton. He keeps charging. He's running real smooth lines, and, I mean, he's going to know when his back and legs come tomorrow. Upton tried to hold off Campbell. Campbell is right there, ready to take advantage of it. Well, if I was Campbell, I'd be watching more of what Carlson's doing and not so much worry about Upton because I know I'm going to get him eventually because he's going to either fatigue or he's not going to be able to corner as well as I am. So I'd be trying to dispose of him and get after Carlson. Travis Pastrana continues to lead the 250s. We'll be back with more from the Suzuki RM Challenge Cup in a moment. Art Ekman, Rick Johnson, and Davey Coombs bringing you the Suzuki RM Cup action from Las Vegas, Nevada. The 250 experts on the track right now. Our battle within this race is for third. A three-way battle it is. Campbell makes the move on Upton, just as you suggested, Rick. In the exact same place. Upton just had to, like I say, surrender that double jump. He can't take it. There's too big of a chance. But I got to say, this kid is riding that bike hard with no seat. Back and forth we go. Upton tried to take it back. Ted Campbell currently in third. Number 347. And Curry's making a charge back up, so now he's on Upton. So, like I say, this is turning into one of the longest days for Upton. He's just like, man, we that white flag out. These guys keep passing me, and I'm doing the best I can. Campbell to the inside. Now Curry coming to the outside. Curry bar to bar with him. Curry makes the move on Upton. All of our action is right here as Travis Pastrana is our leader and has dominated this race. But what? Some great thrills have come out of these passes right here. Well, what's happened is Upton both times has had to move to the outside and, and surrender the inside big double because he can't take a chance without a seat. White flag is about ready to come out. And these guys are still battling for the positions. There's Curry, number 46. Curry to the outside, taking a lapper as he tries to pull up now on Campbell. The final lap underway, the heel clicker from Pastrana. Travis has been phenomenal today, Art. He's gone out, he made the passes early, he rode away from these guys, and he's having a good time. This is a great farewell to his amateur career. He even takes the time to wave to the camera. Well, you know, he thinks about the fans. I mean, obviously he does it in all the, all the jump shows that he does, but he's out there thinking, I want to put on a show as well as win. His advisors are telling him this is where it's going to be in the future, on well, the track, not the jump. Definitely. If you compare the, the money that's made between Jeremy and the top jumpers, one's a lot bigger than the other. Taking a brief look at what Travis is most widely known for, his performance in San Francisco at the X Games. He put on a great show winning the event. From tricks and showy jumps to what his advisors tell him is where his future lies competitive motocross here in Las Vegas. Travis Pastrana has put on a great show. Checking out on the rest of the field, number 199, approaching the checkered flag here at the RM Challenge Cup. Standing up, the checkers are out and waving. No hands for Travis Pastrana at the checkers. Pastrana winning the $2,000 for first place here. Strata looking back to see who follows. They're coming across the finish line. It's Danny Carlson in second place, followed by Campbell, Curry, Upton, Yezik, and Terlicki. A couple of veterans not making the top five. Let's go down to Davey Coombs now with our runner-up. Danny, I know you're not very used to the Suzuki, but, man, you looked right at home that time. A solid second-place ride. Yeah, I had RG 3D suspension. Felt a lot more comfortable. These bikes just play rule. <laughs> Jump on a stock bike and can run with the modifieds. Just feel real comfortable on them. You had an excellent start there. Tell us what you were thinking off the gate. I didn't take the parade lap, so that way, you know, every little bit of counts. Got the whole shot. Travis went by me, and he's going fast. I wasn't going to try and go down, so I played it smart. Stride moon race, and he rode great. I saw he was doing that double jump combination through the middle there. You let him do it once on you, and then you picked it up. Used that to get away from Campbell and Upton, those guys. Yeah, my qualifier the first round, I jumped in the wind and cased it, so I wasn't doing it. Travis did it. I knew I could do it, so <laughs> that helped me. Okay. Hey, anyone you want to thank? Yeah, definitely. FNS Suzuki, those guys are good. And Fox, Arnett, All Pro. Everyone stick behind me. I appreciate it. 
Team Suzuki's Roger DeCostera has got to be anxious to see what this young rider can do in the 125s in the pro ranks next year. He is smooth, he's fast, he's with our Davy Coombs right now. Well, Chavez, you are the fastest 250 pro rider out there, but uh, from what I understand, you're not even a pro yet, are you? No, I'm not a pro. Uh, get my pro license October 8th on my birthday. Turn pro at the U.S. Open, which is the 9th and 10th. But, you know, to do well here, this is my last amateur event at the RM Cup here, and all the fans are really backing me, it seems like, and just to put a good performance here in front of Suzuki, who I just signed a pro contract for next year, is above and beyond what I'd ever hoped for. Tell us about the early part of the race. You lined up on the far inside. Didn't quite get the jump, but you are right there. Yeah, I felt like I came off the start pretty good. I'm not really used to concrete starts, but, you know, I've been working really hard on them. And, you know, to come out top five was great, and I ended up coming out third, which was, I thought, pretty good for me, and um, ended up being getting in front by the end of the second lap on the back section. Denny Carlson was riding really well, but I felt like I just put in a really smooth ride and ended up, you know, taking the win, so I was really happy with my ride. I know you've been with Suzuki since you were eight years old. You basically have one more amateur race to go, the 125 class coming up. Got any little nostalgia or is it as a good feeling for you? Well, it's definitely a good feeling to be here at the RM Cup. It's my last amateur event. But, um, you know, the 125s is probably the, my biggest concern right now because that's what I'm going to be riding in when I turn pro next year. So uh, everyone here is from Suzuki is watching me, and, you know, to put in a good performance would mean a lot. It doesn't look like the pressure bothered you a bit in that race. Yeah, well, thanks. You know, I just really concentrated on my start and just rode smooth from there. So, you know, I'm not really in, under too much pressure here, but um, I really, it means a lot to do well. Can Suzuki's latest prospect take two out of two at the RM Cup Challenge? We'll find out. Plus, check out the other divisions when we return. We're back at the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge where Travis Pastrana has just won the 250 expert class. There's been lots of other classes racing here as well in Las Vegas. Let's take a look at the highlights of the 250 Intermediate B-Class. Daniel Tesh out of North Carolina took second place. Kevin Townsend of Long Beach, California, third. Number 62, Calvin Adlovec, took the early lead. But watch number 10. Evan Lothridge will make the pass in the first place. Jesse Ketchum would win the 125 Intermediate B-Class race, but he crashes out here in the 250s to open the door for Evan Lothridge from Forest Ranch, California. Lothridge looking very promising for a future career in motocross. In the novice C class, it was number 25, Dusty Fountain from Grand Prairie, Texas, taking the whole shot and didn't look back, leaving the field to battle for second place. RK Field took second place. While behind him, Josh Askew went all the way out west from McDonough, Georgia to finish out the podium. One of the great races on the day came in the ADCC 7 to 11 class. Florida's Davey Millsaps, number 88, and Michigan's Joshua Lichtel circled the track almost glued together. Millsaps held the close lead for almost the entire race until the last lap, that is. Side by side over the tabletop, they overjumped at about 15 feet. Lichtel got the better drive on the landing and would take the checkers. Let's go to the veteran class now, the veteran 30s. Number 85 is Chris Young. He's in first place out of this clean start. John Nelson, number three, is right there. That is until he hits the deck on the opening lap. Young will show us an old Pony Express type get off. That opened the door for the checkered flag for Jeffrey Pastana from Marina, California. Sean McAllister from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho was second. And John Zeit came in third. From the ADCC's 12 to 13, a local rider, number 44, Kyle Partridge, was looking good earlier in the race and was pulling away when his number 44 broke. And it was Kyle Partridge showing us how frustrating motocross racing can get. With the hopes of winning vanishing for him, all he could do was throw his hands in the air. And watch number 49, Michael Willard, 
of Thornville, Ohio, with the 12 to 13 ADCC class. More two-wheeled action from the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge at the Motocross Arena Las Vegas Motor Speedway when we return. Welcome back to the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge as we continue our look at highlights from several of the 11 classes in action here in Las Vegas. Picking up with the 125 Intermediate B class, number 36, Jesse Ketchum of Valley Springs, California, was able to avoid the early pileup involving Ryan Metzler and Daniel Pesch. Number 36, Jesse Ketchum after crashing in the 250s. Revenge was on this young man's mind. He would win the class. Besting Evan Lothridge and Brandon Milstead. The 125 Nama C class, it was a return winner. Number 25, Dusty Fountain. Got beat out for the whole shot, but came on strong later. Disaster for Matt Barber. Number 58, Fishtails and slides out on this one. Fountain, the 250 winner, would take the 125 Nama C class checkered flag the only double winner of the day. Mark Miller Jones of McMinnville, Oregon took second. Zachary Miller of York, South Carolina placed third. Moving on to the 40 plus class. Number seven is Peter Murray. He had the most fun. Even at time, to clown it up for the camera. While besting Rick Munson and Kenny Zeit for top honors, Murray continually gave our cameramen thrill after thrill, winning the most advanced class. There was another standoff up front in the ADCC 14 to 15 class. Willie Browning passes number 14, Brad Majewski, for first place. Majewski, after regaining the lead, then goes down before the lap one could be completed. Winning the event, Gene Stoll of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Shane Bass of Oxner, California took second, while Brad Majewski got back up and running to take third. Time now to get back to our second featured race at the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge, the 125 expert class, where the question still is unanswered. Can Suzuki's promising young star, Travis Pastrana, add the 125 title to his already captured 250 ground race? Well, Travis was unbelievably strong in the 250, but he is a bigger guy, and we'll see if he gets off the gate as well on a 125 as he did on the 250. 199 right there. Travis Pastrana will take check him out here as the gate's ready to drop. Pastrana gunning for the lead. Number 735, Josh Tarantino gets the whole shot, but Pastrana's right there. Pastrana putting the heat on, comes off the hill in first place. Travis shoots to the inside with a real bold move. Hotel and also Curry get by Josh Tarantino, and now we got a race for the lead. David Odell out of Salem, Wisconsin. Did a nice job there, is now back in third. What Curry is determined in this one, that's for sure. Look at Pastrana and Curry both go to the outside. Odo goes to the inside. None of the 125s are making that double like they were on the 250s, so that changes the track. This is a different track on a 125 than it was on a 250. Number 199, Travis Pastrana. The young phenom for Team Suzuki, in case you just tuned in, has taken the lead here in his second featured race. He won the 250s, would like to put that 125 title away before turning professional. But Curry, Paul Curry, right behind him, is determined. Paul's running a really strong race. He seems to be arcing the corners a little bit more. Travis is definitely the more aggressive of the two, but Curry seems to be flowing a little bit smoother. Here they go together. Oh, they scrape. Oh, we'll talk about bar to bar art. These guys are back and forth. Now, you put two average riders in a situation like that, you have catastrophe and broken bones. But these guys are high level pros. They both compensate for it beautifully, and they both walk away, and they're still racing. So Curry now takes the lead on Travis Pastrana. Kind of showing the rookie a few moves. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely showing his teeth. Here you come up. Now, watch Curry. Leans in with his body, so if there is contact, it's not going to hook up the two bikes. Now, right there, Travis Pastrana basically crashed but just didn't hit the ground. That's what that jump experience does for him. He's able to save it when most guys would go down. 
Travis Pastrana not letting him off the hook. Tries to take the inside corner. Takes the lead back again. Here comes Curry. Oh, back and forth we go. Well, right there, the rookie did not like that move over the jump, and he took a really aggressive shot at him, but he didn't make it stick, and Curry's back out in front. Odell is there in third place, so the three of them now pulling away from the pack. Travis is so aggressive over the jump. He hits things so hard. He hits stuff like with the intensity of Ricky Carmichael and Bob Hanna, but he's got the leverage and the long, lanky limbs that can keep the bike down and get it back on the ground and drive, drive into the ground. Curry, currently first place. Postrata second, Odell in third. Back and forth, we got a race. We got a race right now. These guys are going for that championship, and Travis wants to go out on top. Odell's in an interesting position in third here. As these two battle it out, oh, and Odell gets caught, hung up on Pastrana. One of the things that I was going to say, Art, is that all top three riders, none of them are looking back. They're all concentrated on going forward. Odell was putting on pressure. I don't mean, even think that Pastrana was worried about him, but he happened to get stopped a little bit quicker, and then Odell goes down. So a tough break for Odell, but the battle continues for the lead between Curry and Pastrana. The 125s, the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge continues from Las Vegas when we return. Welcome back to Las Vegas for the annual Suzuki RM Cup. The 125s are on the track, and it's a knockdown, dragout display going on for the lead between Paul Curry and number 199, Travis Pastrana. You see how far away they are from the next bike. Travis, uh, Josh Tarantino, who's falling back. Oda went down, and that messed up Tarantino just a little bit, but it's given Curry and Pastrana a chance to get out in front and not worry about anybody else except themselves. Kind of have the feeling here that's going to take more than speed for Pastrana to pass the experienced Curry. Well, Curry's got his elbows out pretty wide, and I think he displayed that he wants this really bad. He had some misfortune in the 250, and so he wants this 125 desperately. But, you know, when you got youth on your side, 15 years old, factory contract, you want to look good. Be a feather in Curry's cap, too, if he can uh, kind of take the, the wind out of the sail. You might say, oh, get a little squirrely back there, 199. Travis Pastrana somehow hung onto that bike and stayed upright. That's that trick riding for you. He, once again, he crashed three times there, but just never hit the ground. We watch this. He comes around, loses the back end, it kicks back. He reacts with his body, bounces out again. He saves it again. That bike was almost at a 90 degree, and he still pulls it off. Travis, I mean, that's why they're paying him the big bucks. <laughs> Incredible balance. What about the transition to Supercross for a young man like Pastrana, who's in second place, as you see? Uh, with many riders, they don't get a lot of jumping experience, uh, Supercross experience. Yeah, but Travis... But it looks like his uh, transition might be a little easier. This is the complete opposite of, say, Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli comes off fast tracks, real high speeds. Now you take somebody who's got all these, not all of these done, but a lot of big jump, big shows, there's not going to be one jump on a Supercross track that is going to intimidate Travis Pastrana, but it's going to be the speed and the consistency on how fast these guys go every lap that's going to get him more than anybody else. Oh, we got Whoa! It. Dan Moore, number 97, out of Yakima, Washington, got bounced off the track by a very aggressive Yuri Dostal. Dostal came in there and just put the move on him. Yuri Dostal, not the most successful 1999, that's for sure. Getting very, very aggressive. Uh, let's take another peek at that action, Rick, if we can, and to see what uh, what really went on. The, motocross is just like hockey. You give a guy half a wheel and he's gonna take it. Right here, Dostal comes in, bam, slam pass. The other rider never saw it coming, and then he stuck under his bike. So you've gotta be aggressive, but I guarantee if the shoe's on the other foot next time, Dostal better watch out. Yeah, you ought to remember the name Dan Moore. <laughs> <laughs> or not go to Yakima, Washington. <laughs> Number 46, Paul Curry, still our leader with Travis Pastrana, who's made such a big name for himself in the amateur ranks, looking to graduate to the pros next year. Travis has been running strong. He, now he falls back, and then he catches back up, and I think that just goes to show where I was talking earlier about his aggressiveness on the 125 and 250. At 250, you make a small mistake. you got horsepower that can correct that. 125 is a lot more momentum, and I think him being aggressive shows that when it works, he brings... Oh, come on. Oh, now it's Curry's time. Curry oh. just comes up a little bit short. That gets bucked a little bit. And now look at the distance. 
Pastrana is right back on it. A one-legged Superman. Uh, that wasn't <laughs> meant for jump competition. No, and I don't think it was meant to happen at all, but uh, <laughs> just came over the top and got bucked. Still Curry. Ready. Feisty. Holding on to first place on Pastrana, even though Pastrana drew close to him. Curry went down to the 250s, but finished in fourth and continues to lead. Take another look. Right here, he comes up to that tabletop, just gets bucked a little bit. At first, I thought he hit neutral, but if you notice, he's right back on the gas and gets going. So he knows Travis is behind him, and he's got to keep that momentum rolling. So it's been a continual battle for the lead. But I like the, the confident air of Travis Pastrana, who does relax and then come back up, pressure, pick his spot. Yeah, he does. He, he's a, he shows a lot of maturity for 15 years old. I know he's going to be 16 next week, but right now he just he corrects the bike when it needs to be corrected. He races hard. You watch him after. He does great interviews. He's just, uh, I mean, he's, he's what the sport needs. I think Curry's mistake gave Pastrana confidence more than rattled Curry. He's not intending to let the youngster win another $2,000. Cam Curry, hold off the charger. We'll be back in a moment. We're back at the Suzuki RM Cup. Art Ekman, Rick Johnson, and Davey Coombs. The races are being run in conjunction with this year's Suzuki Dealers Show in Las Vegas. Suzuki unveiled all their new models for Y2K before thousands of local dealers from across the country at the Rio Hotel and Convention Center. Many of the team Suzuki Pro Riders were on hand, including Drag Race Championship contender Angel Sealing. To sign autographs and greet the local dealers. Lots of smiles as Suzuki unveiled their new products for the year 2000, including this GSXR 750. It's back to one of the best races we've seen on the weekend, the 125 Expert Class here at the RM Cup. The battle continues for the lead, Curry and Pastrana. One, two. Aggressive move right now as they go almost bar to bar once again. Pastrana pulling up close to Curry. Curry changed his line there a little bit. You notice he didn't open up the turn like he has been every other lap because he knew Travis was coming on the inside. And you got to think about Curry as well. He is a seasoned veteran, and he's probably trying to tell Suzuki, hey, you shouldn't forget about me. Even though I know you already spent your money on Travis, but you don't, don't count me out of the equation yet. Well, it really appears here that Pastrana, too, is forcing Curry to ride his very best. Yeah, and, and Curry's riding an awesome race. I never see his head turn around and look back. He's not hes not trying to slow down Travis. He's trying to race as fast as he can, which is nice to see. In a lot of races, you get guys, they worry more about slowing the guy down rather than going forward. The idea of conditioning start to enter in here, Rick? I think it does, but both of these guys look really strong. They're standing up. They're, when they stand up and they sit down, they do it with confidence. They hit the jumps hard. They're both riding really, really fast. You can tell by the big lead that they have. Could prove interesting as they approach lappers, too. Earlier, we talked with Mark Reese of Suzuki about some of those exciting new models for 2000. Well, we've got some pretty significant new models and some significant change models for 2000. Probably the most interesting one, at least to me, is the GSXR 750. Uh, has significant weight loss, uh, much improved power to weight ratio. Also, on the off-road side of things, are the new DRZ 400s, uh, both the Kickstart, Electric Start model, and the Dual Sport model. Uh, these bikes are all brand new, uh, all new four-stroke 400cc liquid-cooled engines, chrome molly frame, very high-performance off-road machines. Suzuki winning the 250 National Motocross title with Greg Albertine number eight was a milestone of achievement. The program was rebuilt by Roger DeCoster, and its research and development from that program will also benefit the weekend warriors. Greg Albertine's win also with the motocross championship, 250 National that he won. He's worked so hard over the last few years. Uh, it's very significant, and it brings a Suzuki name out that uh, our products are as good as anybody. Talk about somebody to look up to and be a good leader on that Team Suzuki for Pastrana. It's number eight, Craig Albertine. Yeah, Albie's a great rider, great champion, and I think he'll help Travis out a ton. You know, you look in the past, guys like Jimmy Button and Jeremy McGrath last year, and also Jeff Stanton and myself, so a teammate is a big help. Curry in first, Pastrana in second. And here's the battle for third, a good one. Jeff Pastrana 
makes the pass into third. Joshua Tarantino now in fourth. Pastana carrying a little bit more speed down through that rhythm section, going by Tarantino and solidly making the pass. Pastrana, Pastana. Try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> An announcer's nightmare right now, second and third. As we take a look now at Curry. The RM Cup Challenge is never held in the same region in consecutive years, making it easier for these riders to get to this amateur event. Pat Alexander fills us in. Over the years, the feedback's been, been really well. Uh, what we've done is we've gone to different venues around the country each year, trading off, going, going from East Coast to West Coast, and then Central. Right now, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is our West Coast venue. And then next year, we'll go, go back east again. Our battle for first place is underway. And look at this. Uh, Paul Curry is leading, but it looks like he might be trying to use some lappers now to scrape off the pesky and fast Travis Pastrana. Pastrana is all over the track trying to make a ground on Curry, but Curry is cutting his way through the lappers very well. 199 in second place, right behind 46. Tries to cut inside. Travis Pastrana in trouble once again. Anything can happen in this one. Stay tuned. More RM Cup coming. A Suzuki RM Cup challenge is being brought to you by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Watch number 199, who goes to square off the turn, get a straight shot, but the lapper went to hold the inside to give Travis the outside, and unfortunately, they both ended up at the same place at the same time, and he lost a lot of ground to Curry. Still, Travis Pastrana now trying to pick up the distance to challenge Paul Curry for first place once again. The kid never gives up. That's one thing. That is for sure, Art. You watch him. He falls back, he keeps charging forward, but he gets right up behind Curry and he comes to a dead standstill. I don't know what's up, but he needs to stick his nose in there. How much does wear and tear and conditioning wear on one's mind in, in tight situations? Well, really, the person that, that's under pressure is number 46, Curry, because every time he feels uh, Pastrana fall back, and the next thing you know, two turns, three turns, he's right back on the tail applying pressure. So he's like wondering, is this kid going to take a shot at me or what's going on? Because like I said earlier, when guys, guys remember these things, and Curry made a really aggressive pass on Pastrana, so we should see some sparks here. 199, Pastrana trying to pursue Paul Curry, number 46. Here comes Pastrana once again, trying to move to the inside. Comes down hard off that jump, though. And is a little bit out of control. He's got to start all over. Oh, something happened to his bike. He started kicking the, I don't know if it bent the brake or what it did to it, but he's a little bit out of whack now. Uh, his foot's hanging off that right side. Looks, evidently he's reached he's the jump without peg. a peg. He ripped the peg off when he made that long jump trying to pass Curry. And what that does for Curry is a dream come true. Right? Your last lap, you're dicing with the guy. You don't care what happened, but he's not there anymore. Now you can just cruise to the finish. He's smelling the money right now. $2,000 of contingency waiting with the checkered flag for Paul Curry. And he didn't know. He's looking back to see where Pastrana might be. Great ride by Paul Curry. Just charged the whole time. Wasn't worried about <laughs> Pastrana the first time he looked back was after the checkered flag. That was cool, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Pastrana excited even though he's placed second place behind Paul Curry. Let's take a look now at the official standings. Paul Curry, the winner. Pastrana, Pastana, Dostal, and Tarantino are top five. Can't say that Paul Curry didn't earn the money this time. Davey Combs is with the 125 expert winner. All right, Paul, I got to tell you what. Travis Pastrana comes down. We make a big deal. It's his last amateur race, but you taught him something. You just don't learn the amateur ranks. It's how to compete with the pro. Yeah, I got uh, started off like third, and Travis started second or first. I don't know, and I just tried to go hard at the beginning and get around him because I knew it was fast and hard to pass, so I just went for it on the opening. It looked like the whole way around, you were really consistent with your lines. As we checked your lap times. I'm sure they were right on the whole way. Does that come from Ryan the Pro Nationals? Or is that just your style, smooth and smart? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's my style. It used to be kind of wild and out of control. So I think I matured a little and showed this year, and I've done a lot better. Right. You just picked up $2,000 from Suzuki. Anyone you want to thank? 
Yeah, I'd like to thank some of my sponsors. Uh, Robert Renard from Raynard Mods, FMF, Pro Taper, Dunlop, Axo, um, Smith, Osiris Shoes, and uh, CTI, and that's about it. One last question. What do you think of Pastrana? How do you think he's going to do as a pro next year? Uh, I'm sure he'll do good. He's a good rider, and uh, he's young. He's got a lot of time to do good, so no rush. Really good job. Impressive ride, Paul. Thanks. Well, for number 199, it wasn't the Hollywood script exit from the amateur ranks that he had wanted. But Travis Pastrana, as Paul Curry said, has got age on his side. Let's go back down now to the winner's area, Davy Cole. Well, Travis, I'm sure you would like to have ended your amateur career with a win, but I got to tell you, man, that was one exciting second place finish. Well, that was probably the most excited I've ever been for second place. I mean, it would have been great to end here at the RM Cup, my last amateur race, with two firsts. But I uh, won the 250, and then coming out here with Paul Curry, you know, he's kind of not been a rival, but he's always been one step above where I have the, for a long time, and I haven't raced him in about two years. So it was kind of rivalry going on. We're kind of making bets at the start and everything. It would have meant a lot, but, you know, especially, too, the money's always nice, but we had so much fun. I mean, when he passed me that first time, and he was he was coming down right on top of my arm. I was like, oh, this isn't going to work. And then, you know, coming to the next corner, we're hollering. It was, it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. I know you do the jumping contest. You just did that doubles thing last week. It looked like you guys were jumping doubles that time. You're almost on the same bike. I'll tell you, for the Gravity Games, I never got close with my doubles partner, Kenny Bartram, as I did with uh, uh, Paul over there. Man, he was right there. We were rubbing in the air. And generally, that's not a good thing. But it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I tried my hardest. I felt like I rode well. So, you know, I can't be disappointed with my ride. But, you know, it would have been nice to win. But second's not too bad, I guess. Your professional career is coming up. Paul Curry's a guy running top 10 to 125 nationals. Did you learn anything from him today? Yeah, uh, I guess I learned quite a bit. Just stay low to the ground and keep the power going. I mean, he was just everywhere. He never made any mistakes. Well, other than he almost flipped over on this, this one hill over here, but that was too far back to capitalize on it. But just he was smooth the whole race, and just the whole time I was kind of waiting. I'm like, all right, you know, there's some sections that I could run a little bit faster than he was going, some seconds he was pulling me. But I was just waiting for a mistake, waiting for a mistake, and then he didn't make one. So. Well, good job on second place. Way to give it 100%, and congratulations on an excellent amateur career. Well, thanks a lot, David. really appreciate it. I'd like to thank American Suzuki for putting on such a great event. Thank you. This is Art Ekman for Rick Johnson and Davey Coombs, thanking you for joining us from Las Vegas, Nevada, for the Suzuki RM Cup Challenge. This has been a production of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com.